CSS Grid is super exciting because it lets us do the kind of layouts that we've been doing in the past much more quickly. But I'm way more excited about the fact that it lets us do layouts that were either incredibly tricky to do in the past, so they kind of weren't worth it, or they were impossible, and now they're possible for the first time. One of the things that's possible that was not possible before is to easily overlap items on the page. You probably don't even really think about the fact that on the web, kind of everything is separate on a web page. That we don't overlap elements. Maybe you make an element that has things embedded in it overlap, like an image that's actually two or three images. It's like a collage. But for the most part, when you have an image, the title is below it or next to it. You don't or above it. You don't put the title over top of the image. In magazine layouts, however, you see those kinds of layouts all the time. You see layouts where little bits and little pieces are overlapping other pieces and other bits. The only tool that we've had in CSS for the last 10, 15 years to do overlap like that has been absolute positioning. But absolute positioning is really tricky to use. It's great. It's a great choice when you're positioning something small, like a little flag that says new, and you're trying to put it over something. That's fine. But when you're trying to do a bigger layout with absolute positioning, the problem is that absolute positioning doesn't take up space in the flow. So you have items that are you know, you maybe you don't know how tall it is and you want to put it with something else. If you use absolute positioning, there's no way to have something follow after that original thing that's been positioned because there's no way to know how big that thing is. And in the context of a content management system, maybe sometimes that thing is really short and you want your next thing to be here. And then another time the thing is really tall and you want the thing to be down here. Well, absolute positioning doesn't have any way to acknowledge or to carve out space for one item followed by another item. So... It's kind of gone on the back burner as a tool that we don't use very much. It was one of the original ideas for layout for CSS. I think uh, the folks who invented it thought that it would be the main way for doing tons of layouts, but it really didn't live up to expectations. So CSS Grid is filling in the gap that's been here for a decade and a half, and it's allowing us to do the kinds of layouts that maybe we should have been doing all along. But here we are. So overlap is one of the things that we can do. The problem is that we have these habits. We have decades of habits of assuming that we can't overlap. We got to break that habit. We got to start reimagining what good graphic design could be with overlapping things. And I don't mean going crazy or going nuts. I just mean small places in which we might use overlap to create interest or to help us do some sort of an asymmetrical layout or help us have something that's super robust in a content management system context where we don't have any idea how long the layout is, but we have a way in which to create interesting layouts despite the complexity. So here on labs.gensims.com, I have a, an example of how you might overlap items. I can go in here to inspect elements uh, and check out the layout tab. I can turn on the grid. I can click on the target. It's going to jump us to the unordered list that is, in fact, our grid container. And you can see here uh, I've got these row lines, one, two, four, which actually there's line three and line four that are both here. They're stacked on top of each other. Line five, line six, line seven. And in the other direction, the column direction, row line one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, we can look at the rules and we can see how we've defined our um, grid. On our grid container, we've said display grid, which makes this become a grid formatting context. And then we've got grid template columns. And I've just written out what I want. 4FR, 2FR, 2FR, 3FR, 6FR. Basically, that's making a set of columns where this gets four units of space, this gets two units of space, two units of space, three units of space, and six units of space, which is a way to create a ratio-based array. Instead of having every column be the same, we make them all variations of a ratio. It makes it a much more interesting layout. Um, we didn't even define anything about rows. It's getting created automatically, which is why these two row lines are ending up on top of each other, which, by the way, is fine. There's nothing wrong with this at all. Um, it's just how it is working out in the automatic placement algorithm. Um, and then we can look at these list items. So I can see that I've said I want this particular item to start on grid column line one. 
which is here, line one, and I want it to span two columns, so it goes boop, boop, and it ends up on line three. Or here, grid row line one, and I want it to span two columns, and it ends up here on row line three as well. You can look at this list item, and you can see that it is starting on grid row line two, and it's spanning four rows. So this is the first row. The second row is actually right here because these are collapsed. This is the third row. This is the fourth row. So it's sort of ending here, except the image isn't tall enough, so it, uh, it doesn't go all the way down. But that's the area in which this particular piece of content is being placed. And then it starts on column line two, and it spans three. So span, 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 and it ends over here on column line five. Or you can look at this one. It starts on grid row four, and it spans three starts on column line four, and it spans two. You can get in here with a grid inspector and you can mess around, change these numbers, see what that does, dig into why exactly it is that these two lines have collapsed on top of each other. But the basic principle here is simply that we are telling particular content items or particular grid items to be in the same area as others. We've said this area, and then we've said this area, and those two areas overlap each other. So we have overlap on the page. Let's look at a couple other examples, pretty simple ones, where again, we just have a basic grid happening, and we've explicitly placed things on this grid. Here I've got an image that's being placed in one particular area, and a headline that's being placed in another particular area, and because this uh, image is told to go from column line 1 to 3, and the headline is being told to go from column line 2 to 4. Well, there's overlap between column line 2 and column line 3. And so therefore we've got a kind of a teaser card that has a much more interesting layout by creating just a very simple adjustment. It's not so crazy that users are going to be confused. It's just going to have a little bit different visual, a little visual variety compared to what we're used to seeing. You can see here that I've made another uh, example where um, all of these circles are in fact translucent circles and they're overlapping each other. So some of these circles are pink and some of these circles are blue and these circles are intentionally being overlapped and where they overlapped you can see the purple, the intersection between the two circles. Again dig into this on your own and, and check out how the code is done but it's just another example of how overlap can be used. Or this is a poster that I saw and that I wanted to, to try to do with a grid, uh, see how it is that we can kind of lift ideas from graphic design of the past to help shake us out of our habits and get the juices flowing, get us being more creative, but doing so in ways that are easy for users to comprehend because we're borrowing principles from magazine design or print design or poster design that people are very, very familiar with. So try out CSS Grid, inspect these examples, and seriously consider using overlap in the designs that you make in the future.